today I'm going to talk about how to build and deploy applications uh, written in Python using serverless approach. My talk will be more technical because um, I'm mostly backend developer and I like uh, try something by my hand and I will try to show you some journey about serverless and especially how things works. And uh, I'm contribute a little bit some serverless uh, micro frameworks and I will show you some problems that it uh, sh uh, involve in your project. Okay. Uh, in next few years, we are going to see the first billion dollar startup. It's a quote by James Gonover. And uh, it's funny because it sounds like true because there are so many companies which like 10 people or one person, like founder and engineer, the same person. And uh, I created small article about regions because I usually try to understand how things growing, why we found this term serverless and why is matter for us. And it's confusing many developers around the world. And let's try to understand it. Uh, the origin of serverless first time came from Ken Fromm in 2012. And it's okay that in 2017, maybe you did not try it before. Uh, and later, uh, Badri Jankarman mentioned that he also heard about serverless during the continuous integration and continuous deployment context. And one of the good examples of serverless, it's Travis. We like Travis, you create GitHub repo, you just create small, if it's open source. Uh, if not, you can pay a little bit money, but you can delegate something to third party and you don't want to manage Jenkins, plugins, etc., because it's really big stuff and uh, lots of work. Later, in 2014, as previous speaker said, Amazon Web Services announced AWS Lambda, and during his talk in reInvent, he uh, two guys from this company show how, uh, how they re rework or rebuild uh, application play on sports with so many users using AWS Lambda. And they showed how it can be in your real production, not just pet project or funny, or like David said today, like if something did not work, you can call it just POC or etc. Yeah, and as a good technology, what about conferences? I love Python because I think that we have more Python conferences than another technologies. I've been in Ruby conference and so many Ruby conferences compared to Python. I think for this year I've been on five PyCons and I think you can uh, go more because you have like 20 or 30 PyCons you, uh, around the world. And serverless also has conference with serverless con. And now I, I, I would love you to show uh, about this different approach about Lambda and how Lambda works because it's serverless, okay, but how it really works. And because it's a little bit different approach how things uh, works in your Python application. And I use some diagram from very famous book about serverless. Uh, it's like a simplification of documents because you can think about it like request response cycle, like some requests go, lambda IP call, you have event, you have context, I will show you deeply how it works. And function execute and you see results. We can call it synchronous uh, lambda. But in documents you can find that it's called uh, more like request response, that's why I put it to slide. Another approach you can think about lambda is asynchronous call. Uh, some event triggered and then Lambda uh, execute your event with your function and that's it. And after that, in some time, in another, I don't know, database, you can see 
in 30 minutes some results, for instance. Okay. When we talk about Lambda, you should keep in mind four things. It's function name, memory size, timeout, and role. It's four uh, minimum build uh, blocks for your Lambda. Okay, but let's let's go and do some coding and uh, show. I, I will show you how it can be in Python. This the simplest example. Uh, it's like one function, and as I said, it's required two arcs, event and context, and then you can run it, and you see results, uh, and it's okay. But uh, I will show you how to do things with command line because I, I don't like Amazon UI, that's why I prefer some tools. And as you can see, you first you should zip your function because you can upload it directly or just copy paste the body of the file. And then you can use AWS command line tools to create a function. As I said, you should put some region, function name, uh, pass to zip file or your function and role, you should predefine role before you create lambda, etc. And uh, you see runtime, timeout, memory size, and that's it. And later, you can invoke your lambda function with the same uh, command line tool, but another parameter which invoke, you should put function name, you should put payload, and one really I don't like with this, that they return text file as an output. You should save as a text file and see it. Okay. Uh, it's, okay. it's really cool when you can manually create, run stuff, but uh, for now it's very uh, important to work with HTTP. Yeah, and I, I prepare a small example with uh, uh, Amazon API Gateway. It's how you can trigger your function because AWS Lambda can't support uh, any uh, HTTP protocol. It's just you can use AWS API to run Lambda function as I showed, or you can uh, subscribe on event, or another way you can use API Gateway, you should create all mapping with roads and map it manually to uh, AWS Lambda function. And as, as you can see, I create simple resources for books. You can, for instance, create road books, forget books, uh, etc. Or see one book or delete book. But it's, uh, it's, it's really complicated to do it by hand. It's, uh, it will take uh, so, so much time. But also you can uh, use Chalice. Uh, the example is very simple. Chalice, it's not really flask it's something between flask and bottle it's very tiny and what Chelly does is just help you to map these roads to your uh, functions one big problem with Chelly is it will create only one lambda function and it's not so good uh, i think it will uh, improve it and also you should do some not good code if you need really uh, RESTful service. You should implicitly check request and uh, which method, do some stuff. I don't like this code. But uh, the coolest thing about Chalice, you can deploy. Uh, very simple. No need to use AWS command line tools or zip your uh, file, etc. All stuff Chalice does under the hood. It will create IAM policy, uh, Lambda function, deployment action, whatever, and return back your link. L looks okay. Let's try uh, to do it. You can see that you can, after that you can do get. Uh, also you can see that uh, it's dev environment. You can uh, deploy Chalice as a production. It will have a prefix uh, production. You can do uh, get, you can do get by book all books, you can see specific book, you can delete book, etc. Chalice under the hood use bot core and typing. I, w when I first create PR to Chalice, I, I proposed to use Python 3.6, but they skip it. But Chalice uh, is a really good project where you can see both 
Python 2 and Python 3. They use typing model and uh, the code looks very uh, like for 2017. But problem that still open, it's like all this stuff shall is create. Then you go to our AWS uh, dashboard and so much resources, you have a bills for that. Uh, maybe you heard this joke, I like AWS services, but I don't like to pay when I see invoice from it because I don't understand what's included. I think you know this really problem. And Chalice can't delete stuff, like Chalice did not clean up if you want. And I tried to solve this problem and after that, Chalice team decided to new approach. It's like SAM, yeah? It's a, a project which tried to use cloud formation uh, and uh, define in clean way uh, your resource. Because Lambda, it's not about Python. It's so much resources which you should manage. And like when you decide, okay, I don't want to do any uh, infrastructure stuff. I just want to write my code, deploy it, and uh, er everybody happy. But you still need to do lots of stuff in AWS services, and you still need to work with these parts. And uh, the status of SAM, it's still work in progress. Chalice does not support it, but I hope it, it will. Okay, uh, another very important question, limits. Because everybody can ask, what's limits about this? Uh, I don't want, can I, can I, I don't know, put uh, free space? Uh, how many descriptors? Can I do fork of process? How many execution duration, etc. cetera? I, I put all limitations here and you can use it. I mean, personally, I use it for my own daily basis uh, work to decide, can we use Lambda or not for this project? Okay. Uh, good stuff that AWS uh, prepare for you some free tire and using this free tire you can do uh, first 400,000 seconds execution time for free and you can proportionally uh, change these numbers if you decrease uh, memory. Let's say you select 128 megabytes and it will uh, generate one million and six thousand seconds. Okay. As previous speaker said, I will skip it. You can you can run Django. It's really using Zappa. One interesting thing is that Zappa it top ten Python libraries last year. It's so uh, the community of Zappa and problems they tried to solve so huge and there are lots of um, utils inside Zappa. It looks like Django because you can, you when you install Django, you have everything. Sometimes you need only 1%, but Django include so, so much stuff. Okay, and again, what do you mean serverless? Uh, it's a server, like, but it only has 40 seconds, 40 milliseconds life cycle. It's how I usually think about it, but it's real numbers. Okay, and with Zappa, uh, just return back. With Zappa, you can do the same stuff as with Chalice, the same API, you can deploy, you can see logs, etc. But let's, let's play a little bit in small game. A uh, couple months ago, we still have only Python 2.6. And I decided to do some, some trick. If Let's imagine I'm in the past. What if I want to run another runtime? Because I'm a, I usually want to know where my code is running. I can't imagine my backend daily job when I can't check open ports, how many open files, processes, etc. And sometimes it's really cool because if you had experience in past with uh, Heroku, you understand me. Sometimes it's difficult to to check. Uh, how things works. But Python 2.7, like, why they use this runtime? And, uh, like, we have only less than three years and uh, Python will not be maintained. Why they uh, don't want to use Python 2.3? Okay. 
let's play a little bit game. When I for, let's create a simple lambda function, run it, and see what's what what's the environment. And it's just simple Amazon Linux like EC2. You can use it. Okay, it's really cool. What can I do with this environment? Is it like resources closed, or can I do some tricky stuff? Or not? Okay. Let's let, let, let's check the kernel version, or and then run it. Okay. And uh, I see it's just simple Linux. And uh, okay, what can I do more? Okay. How do you think if I run Lambda with Python 2.7 uh, environment, does Python 3 exist or not? Any ideas? Yes, and it's true. It exists. It's just general Linux machine with Python uh, 3.4 old version, and I can do uh, like. Yes, it's what I really need. Okay. And the same approach works. You can just, like, I do, like, in black room, and I try step by step understand where things, how it works, what I can do, what not. When I show this slide on PyCon Italy, a uh, couple guys from AWS Lambda team said, we will close this, like, you can't do which Python 3. I said, okay. But I checked it works still. Okay. Let's imagine... Run Python 3 from Python 2. Is it a good idea or not? I think no. It's like when you run something from another version of Python, but I like re I, all my projects in Python.3. I, I don't want to use Python 2. Okay. How can I do it? Okay. I need EC2, uh, the same Linux machine. Uh, then uh, I will show you how how it's not easy and tricky to if you need libraries because when you work with lambda it's okay when you do hello world i don't want to do hello world i i want to at least request i need to create virtual env it's the simplest way how you can add then uh, i like create this uh, environment as a zip file and just deploy it and uh, I show you what I try to do. I run, I run from Python 2, went from Python 3.4, and it works. Okay, I mean, but one problem that we can't send data from Lambda to internal Python script, and uh, yeah, it's not production ready. Please don't do it and. If your team lead go to me or your mother and said you do something wrong, please don't reference to me. I just playing with you a little bit. Uh, okay. And uh, these ideas came from Sven, uh, and thanks for him. And if we talk about future of serverless, you can like, imagine uh, that uh, the biggest problem of serverless still we have five or six frameworks they like grow independently but they they all these frameworks has the same issues the biggest problem is tooling it's really time confusing to work with real uh, real uh, applications you need still deploy you need uh, build configure monitor etc like in and the most uh, valuable part Sometimes it's tricky to debug. I show you how you can, on previous slides, you can see how to debug. Yeah, if I run Python 3 from Python 2, I think you can debug a little bit. Okay. And yes, on April 18, uh, they released Python 3.6. Everybody happy. I started switching uh, my uh, lambdas to Python 3.6, but I still show you some another problems that exist uh, in my project i decided to do some face detection example and again uh, lambda is okay for hello world let's say i need not requests because request it's easy it's written mostly in python but if i want open cv or another huge library with 
C++, binaries, and etc. And it's really complicated with Lambda. But again, what you can do, you should uh, like, I don't know, go to weekends and sit with your Linux machine, play a little bit, and you should prepare some uh, dependency. Uh, you should compile, all, all this example, by the way, compile, uh, except if you have wheels, uh, it's it a little bit faster. And I can, uh, the same, the same trick, yeah, you, you prepare environment uh, and uh, install wheels or just compile. Compiling from, I remember like a couple weeks ago, I compiled uh, something not specific and it like takes one day for me to put it to Lambda and the uh, community does not care about it. Like we have seven or eight uh, approaches for Python dot seven about like you have Postgres client, you have uh, JOAP, etc. some stuff which you can use. Okay, and uh, now, yes, we can prove Python 3 is working, OpenCV is installed, you can use my scripts or you can just Google it. Uh, for Python 2 it exists, for Python 3 not. Uh, and uh, you see OpenCV installed and I can post image, save it to S3 and real example works, I post image, you see rectangles on faces, my API return how many faces on this, and yeah, it works perfectly. Problem that this uh, zip file with OpenCV uh, takes like 34 megabytes, something like it, with all environment. You have limit, as you remember, 500 megabytes, and I think if this project is so huge that you can't fit, it's just OpenCV. Another important trick which I use, it's uh, as previous speaker said, how you can debug it locally except uh, that it's not chelis. Yeah, because if you try debug chelis, it works perfect, but they have so many bugs which they try emulate uh, API gateway, but it's not the same as real API gateway. And it's like locally it works, on production not, on production it works, locally not vice versa, they try, but uh, another approach is just you can run your function and emulate uh, or mock your event in context. I just create simple script and you can run your lambda, put lambda function model, lambda handler, and you see it, you can use it. I use it for my debuggers uh, on daily basis in big projects. Uh, or you can create another, you can add extra functionality and one question, what about WebSockets? It's, for now, it's very important uh, question because we have so many WebSockets in our uh, apps. But no, API Gateway does not support uh, WebSockets. Lambda can't because they use API Gateway or you can run it. That's why the question not about Lambda, it's a question about, the question to API Gateway team. From 2015, the ticket is raised, you can find it in forum, but nobody cares. Only uh, that they add AWS uh, Internet of Things, it supports WebSockets, and you can find great example how to, how to build or how to use Lambda and emulate your AWS EOT because you can do, you can uh, create events and uh, configure it is like it's EOT generated for your lambdas and it will work in real example. You can see on this link how uh, Stas does it with chats. It's really amazing. And uh, I think, yeah, thank you for your time. And you can find me on Twitter or website. And do you have any questions? Yes, yes, it's required. It's requirement by AWS Lambda uh, API for Lambda. Like you can't, I mean, it should be zip. 
if you put Golang binary and run it, it should be in zip. It's just requirement. But problem that it's memory error when this zip uh, uh, more than like 50 megabytes or something like it. And you should, the, the workaround is to upload it to S3 and they has a command line uh, parameter like deploy Lambda from S3, but another workaround when you use S3, you should keep like in 90s V1 version of file V2. It doesn't support any version control at all. That's why like I like serverless, but the, as I said, the stack for real projects is so pure and uh, yeah, it's up to you to use it or not, but it's Usually it's tricky to compile everything that you want uh, and put to Lambda and you can't debug it. Sometimes you just run it and see some, some file is not exist or something and you can't debug it, locally it works. You forgot to, I don't know. And usually you patch, make files of your binary libraries because they not usually generate correct passes to SO files, etc. Like uh, for open, OpenCV, it's the same issue if you not use will, wills. Okay, thank you.